times, George, when you had an opening on your staff, nearly every time, you hired somebody you didn't know very well. Uh, why was that? Well, I, I think one of the, uh, the objectives I had was to bring uh, to the staff someone that would create unique value. Uh, and I, I, I've always kind of been very leery of hiring someone whose uh, biggest uh, qualification is they're my friend. Uh, you know, uh, the one thing I've always felt you need to, to protect yourself against as, as a leader is groupthink. You need a diversity of, of thinking. And so I tried to look at each individual and say, what value will they bring to, to the staff? What level of experience? I, 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 I was confident enough with myself that I never spent a lot of time worrying about someone trying to, to get my, 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 my job. I think a lot of times uh, if you deal with people in, 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 a, in a proper manner, they'll, they'll, they'll be busy enough and you can divert their thinking away enough that, and they feel that you put them in a position to succeed then they're not, they're not, they, they still have a quest to want to be a head coach, but, but they're not going to be, be seeking your job. What, what I tried to do was f to hire people also that I felt that I could be comfortable with. And then we're going to bring a unique perspective to, to the job. And over the years, uh, 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 there was always a transformation of, of respect of how I viewed the, the assistant coach. For example, the one thing I stayed consistent with, I never had a coaching staff where I didn't have one person on the staff that had been previously a head coach. Except one time, and that was your first time. The first year, the first yes, year. the first year that you're right. And, 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 I, and I grew to understand that you needed someone on your staff that was a, previously been a head coach because they could see through the same lenses as as you did, they understood better, and and also I felt at times if I were were absent for practice, they could oversee practice, they could take over leadership. And as time moved on, I really began to understand the value of sharing the leadership, and and to give people uh, specific responsibilities and 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 to put them in a position to grow and succeed. For example, you know. In, in your case, you you always oversaw uh, where he, the the keeper of academics and and that, and you're also always a great mentor to not only to the players but to the coaches, and you you always had a, a unique and still do a, a perspective in the people, and so a lot of times you'd see things in people that I wouldn't necessarily see r right away, and that helped me in, in my overall uh, judgment. And I think if you're going to hire the best, then you got to put them in a position to, to utilize the skills and talents that they possess. And so early on, I tended to, to micromanage. And, uh, and, and then as the years went on, I, I started to delegate more and more authority and, and try to make sure that, that those responsibilities I gave each assistant coach were compatible with their skill sets and experiences.